Good evening, everybody. Welcome to TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Friday nights in July are focused squarely on a slice of Hollywood history eight decades old. Each Friday, we have presented a lineup of movies from 1939, an amazing year in Hollywood, maybe its best year, where quality kept up a reasonable pace with quantity. Tonight, we have our final three movies of the month, three more reasons to celebrate 1939, with a comedy and two romances. Up first, the comedy, a huge hit with an all-star cast and a gimmick that worked. From MGM and director George Cukor, The Women. Here's the gimmick. There are more than 130 speaking roles in The Women, and every single one of them, from the biggest stars to the smallest extra, is played by a woman. And I'm really underselling it, not exaggerating. The artwork on the walls, the children, even the animals, all female. That little contrivance makes the movie stand out in Hollywood history, but The Women endures as a classic because it's a funny, biting, savagely written film featuring standout performances from some of the best actresses to grace the big screen, including Norma Shear, Rosalind Russell, Joan Crawford, Joan Fontaine, Paulette Goddard, and Mary Boland, all of them working for a director highly regarded for his ability to direct actresses and direct comedy, George Cukor. If there's a lead in this ensemble, it's Norma Shear as a loving wife and mother married to a wealthy and seemingly adoring husband, who, of course, we never meet. But when she discovers her husband may be having an affair with a department store sales clerk, the movie's sharp wit and wicked backbiting takes center stage. I'll let you discover who plays the sales clerk on your own, the other woman, but did I mention Shear's longtime rival at MGM, Joan Crawford, is in the cast? The sharp script is the work of screenwriters Anita Luce and Jane Murphan, based on a hit Broadway play by Claire Booth Luce, All Women. A few men were allowed to help out, too, but only behind the scenes. Most notably, of course, that was Q-Corp. There were also uncredited script contributions from F. Scott Fitzgerald, extravagant costume designs by Adrian, and expert production design by Cedric Gibbons. Here it is, from 1939, The Women. For a movie all about women, the ending of the women wasn't exactly a tribute to feminism, but the picture was enormously popular, a hit with both critics and audiences, praised for its witty script and dynamic performances in both the leading and supporting roles. So it might surprise you to learn that the women was not nominated for a single Academy Award. Not one of those performances made the cut. The reason may well have had something to do with sexism. Perhaps a male-dominated Academy didn't get the movie. But much of the snub is almost certainly connected to the year it was released, 1939. We've been honoring 1939 throughout July as the greatest year in Hollywood history. The women was up against some stiff competition, particularly in those acting categories. Gone with the Wind Alone had two Best Supporting Actress nominees, Olivia de Havilland and Hattie McDaniel, who won, as well as the Best Actress winner, Vivian Lee. There was also Dark Victory with Betty Davis, Nanachka with Greta Garbo, Goodbye Mr. Chips with Greer Garson, Love Affair with Irene Dunn. I think you get the point. The Women was likely foiled by the high caliber of its competition, including the movie coming up next, a haunting romance about star-crossed lovers played by Laurence Olivier and Merle Oberon. 